1140 The Fan. Talking money! And we're back. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking quick today. We only got about 10 minutes left before we get into the Niner, or the uh, Raiders game. So off the text line, I did see the Kings are going to hold a uh, press conference at 930 today regarding Chuck Hayes. So get more information on that. I'm not sure. I guess that's accurate. My quiz question was this. Uh, 90% of all U.S. bills and almost 100% of all paper cash in the U.K. contain a trace substance of this. And it is it is cocaine, um, which doesn't mean that uh, 90% of the people in the U.S. and 100% of the people in the U.K. are using cocaine. But uh, it does mean that... Um, that is a substance which I guess gets into probably gets into the machines that quickly count the money and it just leaves a trace on all of them. So people were texting me, please don't say it has fecal matter on it. Well, speaking of that, uh, one in two shopping carts in a recent test had fecal material on them. So think about that when you're pushing around the store and grabbing your fresh veggies. I'm wearing gloves from now on. That's all I can say is I'm going <laughs> to I'm gloving up. So um, we'll take a few off the text line and a few off the phone line. And Chris, uh, we'll get your name and number. We'll get you out some. Some gifts. Let me see here off the text. Anything in here? Jeff, I discovered I qualify for the heart program. What's a good rate with zero points? Um, that's a great question, which cannot be answered off a text line. And the reason being is that there's so many little tricks and, you know, what's the loan to value? What's your credit score? Is it Fannie Mae or is it Freddie Mac? You know, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of things that go into that. And that program is evolving as, as time goes on. So that's a question you have to do. Off the air and in persons, we can give you a, a good example of what you can do there. Uh, lots of people who have won things during the years texting and saying, thank you and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's very nice of all of you. Um, Jeff, thanks for being the original and first sponsor of the Don Germanimo Show. Well, thank you. It was uh, my pleasure and still is to be associated with Don and and uh, all the guys there in the morning. So I've got a few minutes left here. I'm going to save my Google, which is really not a Google. It's, it's how to ace an interview, and there's some questions in here that, if you're out looking for a job, we'll discuss these next week. I'll, I'll read a couple of them to you, and we'll come back to them next week. I'll give you some time to think about it. Um, as we finish up here, our show before the last show of the year, our eve of Christmas Eve, um, you know, one of the biggest values to me for showing up here every Saturday is the mere fact that I have to show up here every Saturday, which means I either got to sit here with my thumb in my, you know what, for an hour, <clears throat> which I might do anyway, but I've got to do something. And, and I don't want to talk about mortgages for an hour. I talk about mortgages all week. By Saturday, I'm looking for something fun and different to do. So it forces me, good, bad, or indifferent, to dig through newspapers, online stuff, um, magazines, you know, you name it. It forces me to dig through everything and find something interesting. But in the process of just finding what interests me, you do, by default, educate yourself on what is going on around you. Now, for every one article I might bring in here to talk about, I probably went through 50 that I had to at least peruse, you know, and then thought, well, you know, that's interesting, but it's not fun. Or it's interesting, it doesn't, it doesn't you know, won't translate well on the air. But nonetheless, it, it, the, the information still ends up in your brain. And I wish, I wish all of you, you know, for one year had to do a, had to do a radio show or at least prep for one because if it's done anything for me, it has made me open my eyes and think for myself, evaluate information and put it in my own brain instead of having someone tell me, particularly a politician, tell me how I should interpret what he or she thinks about it. And over the last eight years, my disdain for politicians has done nothing but grow which is probably obvious, and that, and, that, and that goes for both sides of the aisle. This is not a Republican or Democrat or Independent. They're all, and I use the word all in quotes, they're not all. A majority of them um, don't know what the hell they're doing. They never will know what the hell they're doing, and yet they try to come across and tell us what the hell we should be doing. And it infuriates me. It infuriates me because they rely on the fact that a good majority of us are too busy or too lazy to figure out what is going on around us. And as long as we're willing to do that, they'll keep plugging us with the kind of crap that they think we need to know. They'll keep hitting one of us against the other. 
They'll put the risk against the poor. They'll blame, if I have a good year and you don't, it's my fault that you didn't, or vice versa, which has nothing to do with anything. I was looking at um, one of the articles this week about U.S. home sales. Now, that's supposedly the National Association of Realtors who reported that. And here, surprisingly, in an election year, we found out that, oh, you know what, we, we kind of overestimated how many home sales there were over the last few years. So this year is really a whole lot better than it really sh even better than we thought it was, because last year's were worse than they thought it was. Well, isn't that convenient? Isn't that convenient that all of a sudden we're, we're improving better than we thought we were? I hope it's the case, but it's awfully convenient that we're now 11 months away from another election of all sorts. So I don't believe anything anymore that people tell me. And I love to come on the show and talk about money, because when you talk about money, you're talking about everything. You're talking about sports. Politics, war, sex, business, leisure, you name it, it relates to money. But if I've come to any conclusion in the last eight years about what goes on around us is that I don't think we can rely on anybody but ourselves to pull ourselves up, make things better for ourselves and our family. I'm a firm believer that polit politicians are there to keep themselves employed the only way we're going to resolve that is if you put politicians on a one-term deal. And that doesn't mean you get one term in Congress and you get one term in the Senate and you get one term in your local thing. Pick what you want to be. We'll give you six years to do it. Then we're putting your butt back in the workforce. You're going to go back out and get a regular job, and you're going to live with the rules you created. Now, if you want to run for president, you know you can do a plan B. But that's it. And until we do that, there's no way that things are going to get better for us, I don't think. Because these are people that think in a... I mean, we just went through a big debate over a two-month tax extension. We've been fighting now for weeks and weeks and weeks to extend things for two months, 60 days, and then we're going to do this again. Are you kidding me? My girls in eighth grade think longer than, six, than 60 days out. And this is what we're fighting over. So that is the... Uh, the curse, if you will, of doing the show is that you have to open up your mind a little bit to what's going on around you. And sometimes it just irritates us not at you. But I won't let that keep us from having fun. And that music means we have ended a whopping 25 minutes of, of radio. Mediocrity shortened for your amusement. Hey, that is it for uh, this Saturday. I will be back live next Saturday, our last show of the year. And uh, I got I got some interesting stuff if you're out looking for a job and some things to think about before you go to your next interview. So we'll talk about that next week when we have some more time. I appreciate and I cannot thank you enough for all the people who have called me throughout the year, called the show, texted the show, called me in person, done business in person, or just walked by and gave me the finger. Either way, it doesn't matter. I appreciate you all. Have a great, great holiday. Merry Christmas. Be safe. And we'll check with you next Saturday. My name is Jeff Tarbell. This is Talking Money for Christopher Laud. We'll see you next week, everybody. Be cool. Aloha. Talking money.